Hi, and welcome to this episode of The Whole Truth with me, Simon Cataldo, your state representative in the 14th Middlesex District. On this show so far, we've had elected officials, we've had state agency officials and leaders, we've had all sorts of guests, scientists, specialists. Today we have somebody who is a friend of mine and who has an inspiring story to tell about work that he is doing for folks in our communities. I am so excited to introduce to you Wade Rubenstein, who is the founder of the Bike Connector, also a constituent of mine and a friend in Concord. Wade, thank you so much for joining the show today. Well, Simon, thanks so much for having me here today. And I'll let the viewers know that you and I were together yesterday yep. uh, celebrating Rosh Hashanah at our synagogue. And both of us, uh, completely coincidental to the taping of this show, made a pledge to share or listen to an origin story. And Wade, your story is, I don't have a better word than inspiring, inspiring to me. Uh, your origin story, the way that your professional career has developed. And I thought that before we talk about the great work that the Bike Connector is doing, uh, and I think also related to that, I'd love for you to share anything that you're willing to share about yourself uh, as, we, as we kick off. Sure, well thanks. Um, yeah, that, uh, that Aliyah, that honor to, um, to you know, pledge to tell your story, I think it's important um, you know, what are we? We're all, we're all about stories here. So um, my background, I'm the son of an immigrant. My dad came to this country um, from, from Israel, from the state of Israel. He was a Holocaust survivor. So his story resonates with me and the story of the generations that came before. My mom was also the, um, the child of immigrants from, from Russia, from Nepal. So um, that past kind of resonates with me in the future because they came to this country my dad came with like nothing. My mom's family really came with nothing. And they built a uh, great you know, uh, life for themselves, an incredible life for themselves here in this country. And that means a lot to me. They gave me a lot of opportunities. So I want to extend those opportunities to others as well. And you're doing that. Yeah, I feel like I'm doing, doing that. that. Yeah, um, yeah. But you've also, and thank you for sharing that, you have also had a really interesting professional journey. Yep. And I think a lot of people see nonprofit entrepreneurs and folks that are starting successful and growing nonprofit projects and wonder how they got to that point. So could you talk a little bit about your professional career and your educational career? Because it's a, it's a unique path that you've taken. Yeah, thanks. So I, I grew up in Natick, Massachusetts. Um, very suburban, uh, middle class, went to public schools in Natick, uh, ended up going to Boston College, studying computer science, and went to work uh, after college for Digital Equipment Corporation. And uh, DEC was like the largest employer here in the state, and it was yes. part of that mini computer boom. And you'd say, well, what's a mini computer? Well, most people don't know, but um, for 10 years, I worked at DEC um, as a systems engineer and doing telecommunications work. Um, I stayed in high tech. After DEC, I went to work for a couple startups. Um, there was a company called Cascade Communications. They were mm. based in, in Westford, Mass, and then Sycamore Networks in Chelmsford. Um, and uh, had a really amazing you know, career in, in tech uh, here. And then the telecom um, boom came to an end in the uh, early aughts. And I said, this is an opportunity for me to pivot. So I went and... Uh, got a degree, a master's in education from Lesley College, and taught public school. I taught in Cambridge, I taught in Newton, I was a fourth grade teacher. Really hard work, you know, a shout out to all the teachers out there because teaching, you know, in front of a classroom, talk about performance art all day, um, you're on all day. Uh, so I realized teaching wasn't quite the thing for me, so I pivoted again and I opened up an ice cream shop, uh, which you may know in, uh, in West course. Concord, called Reasons to be Cheerful. And uh, that was you know, the next move. And I operated that shop and grew that shop for eight years. And then in 2018, a gentleman walked into the shop and said, hey, I really like what you're doing here. Would you like to grow this business with me? I said, well, that's not quite what I want to do. And he said, would you sell it to me? Um, so I ended up selling the shop in 2018. And it was another opportunity to pivot. And uh, the next chapter was the bike connector which I started in just immediately after selling the shop uh, in 2018, 
getting the bike connector off the ground. And that's where I am today. Uh, so it's been uh, six, seven years of the bike connector in Lowell. It's incredible. It's prolific and it all at the same time makes a lot of sense based on how you started this conversation. Yeah. Um, there, there, are no, I, there are no straight paths. I will note because I can't help myself that, so as you, I think you know, I started my career as a middle school teacher. Yep. If I were ever to go back into the classroom, I think I would pick fourth grade because in fourth grade, it, the, the kids who I had the pleasure of coming across as a teacher in schools were old enough to get jokes and things, think things were funny, but still young enough to think adults were cool. It's like that little sweet spot. That is, um, that is a sweet it's a, spot. It's a great, it's a great, great. So, and, and uh, speaking of kids, uh, reasons to be cheerful was a big part of my kid's childhood uh, and uh, definitely a treasure. And we were sad to see the transition that happened recently, but grateful for everything that it brought to the community there. So let's talk about your most recent venture. How sure. did this come across, the bike connector? Um, so the bike connector, it's, so I'm a lifelong biker. I love to bike. I mean, that's, Biking for me is therapy and, and transportation and, and recreation, many things. Um, so in 2016, I was asked to join Concord's Long Range Planning Committee. Mm. Um, so this is coming up with the comprehensive plan for the town looking out towards 2030. What is, you know, how will the town evolve? So a comprehensive long range plan looks at housing, it looks at open space, it looks at recreation, it looks at facilities, and it looks at transportation. So transportation interested me as I drive the roads like everybody, and I'm, and I'm a cyclist, and I'm, and I'm a pedestrian. So I was interested in something called multimodal transportation. And I went to a seminar that was being put on by Mass Bike, which is a bicycle advocacy organization here in Massachusetts. Great, great organization advocating for, at that point, it was called Complete Streets. Mm. So how can cars, bikes, pedestrians all share the roads safely, right? Um, so I was looking for knowledge, and at this seminar, I heard about something called um, bike collectives. I had never heard of a bike collective before, but a bike collective is essentially an organization that exists to get people on bikes that can't afford bikes, um, to make and to help pe to educate, um, to promote safety and promote cycling in a community. And the light bulb went off, and I said, "Man, that would be a very cool thing to create a bike collective." Um, and I put that in the back of my mind because I'm, I'm a small business owner. I had yeah. no, no time to do that. And then the next month is when that incident where the gentleman walks into the shop and wants to buy the shop. It's like, yeah. okay, here's the opportunity. So then that light bulb got a little bit brighter and brighter. And um, after I sold the shop, um, I had been tutoring ESOL in Lowell, working as a volunteer for a great organization called the International Institute of New England, okay. which yep. I'm now on the board of. Also known as IINE. IINE, okay. right. So they, they have facilities in Boston, in Lowell, in Manchester, New Hampshire, and they help resettle immigrants that are here, people that come here legally um, that need help with language, that need help finding a job, that need help with naturalization, that need help finding housing. So lots of different services, but I was helping out with ESOL. And one thing I noticed about the immigrants that I was helping out in Lowell is that a lot of them were getting to class, it was on Warren Street downtown, they were riding bikes. Mm. But the bikes that they were riding, they were literally pulling out of the canals. <laughs> I mean, these bikes were junk. They weren't, they weren't safe, they weren't sized appropriately, they were missing parts, but they were more efficient transportation than riding, than you know, walking. Right. And uh, you know, to ride a bus costs money, right? To drive a car costs a lot of money. To get an Uber costs money. So this is low cost transportation. So that light bulb just kept on getting brighter and brighter and said, hey, maybe Lowell needs access to safe, affordable bikes for immigrants. Um, so through my networking, I also found out there was a teacher in Lowell, um, her name was Bernice Chandler, a biology teacher at the high school that was distributing bikes to kids. Mm. So I connected with Bernice and said, what's going on? Why are you giving bikes to kids? And she said, well, at the school where I'm working, it was called the Career Academy, it's still there, in the Highlands, 70% of the kids were chronically absent. So chronic wow. absenteeism is defined as missing 10% of the school year. And the number one reason that the kids were chronically absent was a lack of transportation. They couldn't get to school. 
on time. So this teacher said, well, maybe if I gave the kid a bike, they would get to school. Mm. And it turns out that in Lowell, um, there are no yellow buses for the high school. So to get to school, um, you either have to you know, have a car or walk, or you can buy a bus pass through the LRTA uh, student pass for $25 a month. But for a lot of families, $25 a month is it's either food or the table or you get to school. That's a lot of money. So anyways, this, in, in response to this um, need for transportation, this teacher Bernice was distributing bikes. Um, we got together and said, rather than just giving the kids the bikes, why don't we get the kids to, to refurbish and earn a bike, right? Um, so we created an after school program, which you're familiar with after school yeah. programs, right? Um, and, the, and the principal of the school and the social school social worker said, we'll support you. It's never going to be successful, but we'll support you. We've tried this thing before. But sure enough, we created an after school earn your bike program where students could get a donated bicycle. We had lots of bicycles. I'll talk about that later on. Um, and we built a workshop and the students learned to repair the bike. They learned about the different systems, the drivetrain, the brakes, the tires, uh, what it takes to make a bike safe. So every student got a bike, they got a helmet, they got a lock, we provided bike parking at the school, and lo and behold, this program was oversubscribed. And that first, that first year we gave out 60 bikes to the students at the Career Academy. Being oversubscribed is the best indicator of success, right? It, Throw anything else out the window, Yep. Look at that. I mean, that's uh, quite an achievement. That was awesome. And we did it all with volunteers. I went out and recruited my bike friends. And, you know, bicyclists are very passionate and enthusiastic about cycling. So spreading the good word of cycling, um, it's, you know, this thing has grown very organically, but we have a constituency of volunteers, cyclists in particular, that believe in what they're doing, you know, believe passionately about what they're doing. Um, so, and then what happens? COVID hits. Right, so that was 20, you know, sold the business in 2018, started the Bike Connector. Back then we called it the Bike Academy. Um, COVID hits and we have to pivot. Um, so not only were we giving bikes to students, but I was also giving bikes to immigrants through IINE and student families. Word of mouth came, oh, free bikes, you know, there was a lot of demand, mm -hmm. <laughs> even though there was still that earn your bike component to it. Um, so we moved into a, uh, a storage container, 40 foot storage container in the Highland neighborhood and operated during COVID out of that storage container. And then in 2020, I said, this is, this thing is growing. There's a lot of demand. Let's, this is like viable for a nonprofit. I didn't know much about nonprofits, but I put together a board of directors and uh, we incorporated. And in the spring of 2020, we applied for our 501c3 tax status, which, which got in the fall of 2020. And, um, that was pretty quick. That was pretty, yeah, I yeah. know, it's, it's pretty quick. But we had, actually, we had help from an organization called e for all in Lowell, okay. which is Entrepreneurship for All, uh, which is kind of a, an incubator, like a think, uh, shark tank, if you will, were for entrepreneurs. Were they a fiscal sponsor? Um, they, at that point, they were not a fiscal, we were operating without a fiscal sponsor, mm -hmm. but they provided us with kind of startup capital, some knowledge, and connections, a okay. network of people in Lowell. That's great. That's that great. was a great organization. So check out e for all another great right. nonprofit we'll put the website that, that helps there. out entrepreneurs. And um, we're just going to pause here. We're going to yep. get to this in a second. But so you're now a 501c3. Correct. And yep. contributions are now tax deductible. Correct. All yep. right. All right. Sorry to pause, that's, that's, but I wanted I, to make sure we hit that. I appreciate that. 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 That's very important. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just want to pause on a, on a couple of things that you just said that are, I think, very notable, uh, especially to viewers of this show mm -hmm. who may not be as familiar with that, uh, some of the dynamics that you're working with in that community. First of all, the fact that there's not a yellow bus picking up your kid every day, and you kind of have to figure it out, and, yeah. it, may not, and it may not be free. Um, and also that very stark difference between getting around on a bike, which is free, and other forms of transportation, which is not for folks who don't have disposable income to spend on that. Mm -hmm. And then this component of what you're doing at the Bike Connector where it is earn your bike. Correct. There's not just some depot where you're giving stuff away. No. Um, how is that playing out? Really well. Um, so last year we had 700 students that earned a bike. 700? 700. Where are these students from? Um, they're from all over Lowell. So there's, um, 
So if you're a child that's 11 years or under, we give you the bike. Um, so you don't have to earn the bike because you're just the capacity to, to to do and learn, we give you the bike if you're a young child. So kind of through grade school, we mm -hmm. distribute the bikes and we have programs to do that in the school. So we actually go out to the schools. We partner with actually an organization called Safe Routes to School, which yep. is a mass DOT program. And we do bike rodeos throughout the city and distribute bikes. It's a great program, by great, the way. Great and we're program. seeing it in our district as well. Big yep. success. Te so yeah, teaching bike safety is a big thing in what yep. we do. Um, but for the older kids, for middle school and high school students and college students, um, they can come to us and earn a bike. So we are connected to the schools. We're connected to over 40 different partner agencies throughout the greater Lowell area. It's not just Lowell. You know, we're serving other communities as well. Um, so the students will make an appointment. They'll have a time slot. They come to us after school. Um, we can handle three to four students a day to earn a bike. And uh, we, once again, we're, we're oversubscribed. We're yeah. fully subscribed with that program. Um, we also do after school programming and in school programming to get kids bikes as well. So we've got a great working relationship with the Lowell Public Schools. It's been pretty fantastic. I have two more questions for yep. you in the time that we have. First, how do you track your success? How do you know that you're being successful with this venture? Um, that's a great question. Um, so growth is one, is one measure yeah. of success. So I said back in 2019, that first year, we distributed about 60 bikes. Um, to date, we've given away over 5,000 bicycles. So we've grown very dramatically. Um, that's one measure of success. The that's, other a, that's an amazing impact. If you just think about the size of the community versus that, yeah. that's, that's huge. I mean, and then the other one is kind of more anecdotal. Mm -hmm. But um, so on, on Tuesday, there were, there were two, uh, two boys came into the shop. Um, one was a uh, freshman, ninth grader, one was a sophomore. They were recent immigrants from Algeria, right? They needed bikes to get to school. And here again, it's $25 to get an LRTA student pass, which seems reasonable, but times two is 50, times nine months for the school year is 450 bucks. So to get these two young men, um, teenagers, you know, the bikes, that impact, is huge. Potentially, it's saving that family 450. If they had to go out and buy equivalent bikes to what they earn, that would be another 600 dollars. So that's a thousand dollars of impact right there, right? And our cost as an organization, as a nonprofit, was around 90 dollars. Mm. The bike, the helmet, the lock. The lock is key. If you don't have the lock in Lowell, you're not going to have the bike, right? So we've built a relationship with Legion, which is a company in Canton that owns Kryptonite locks. Ah. So we buy those locks at, you know, what a lock would retail for $30, $40, it costs us $7. That's the helmet, great. same thing. We have a, there's a company, Helmets R Us, we buy helmets at about $10 a helmet. So it's a real cost to, you know, the bike that we refurbish, but in terms of economic impact, so is it a metric that we use? No, but I just know that every bike, if you're going to get to school, if you're going to get to a job, if you're going to get to appointment, and you're, going to def and you're not having to pay the Uber driver or, or the bus or save up for a, for a car, that's a huge savings. Plus all the other benefits from having a bike, right? Yeah. All right, so I think people watching this are going to be convinced. What can they do right now to help the bike connector? Thank you for asking. That's a great question. Um, so if you think of the bike connector as a, as a chair or a table with four legs, right? Those four legs are, we need clients. So we build relationships with partners. So if, if you're in the audience and you're part of a nonprofit or a church group or a synagogue, and you know people in need of bikes, whoever they may be, reach out to us. Because you know, we want to serve those clients. We, we know we haven't reached everybody, right? So we don't want to fly under the radar. So thank you for this opportunity. The, the, the second leg is um, we need bikes. So there's nothing sadder, well, there are sadder things, but so many bikes are idle. Um, so yeah. this came about because my kids grew up, they've left the house, but the bikes didn't leave the house. The bikes are in the garage, the bikes are in the shed, the bikes are in the attic, the bikes are in the basement. So bring the bikes to us and we'll give the bikes a new life. Right. And um, there are lots of great bikes in the community. So if you've got a bike sitting idle, let's put it back to work. Right. And if it's a bike that we can't use um, as we can't refurbish it because let's say it's broken, um, we'll harvest the parts. 
we call those bikes do not resuscitate, mm. but we it's like it's like the butcher that goes from you know the, the 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 nose to the tail. We take everything, right? So nothing goes to waste. And if there's a frame left over, we're going to recycle that metal. So we need bikes. So what do they say? We need we need partners. We need bikes. We need donors. Um, both the bike donations, as I just mentioned, as well as financial donations. We're a nonprofit, so we. Uh, about half of our revenue comes from individual donors. So we need your money. Um, and then the last thing, if I can think about it, is volunteers. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're a volunteer organization. Um, so we need volunteers. So we need volunteer mechanics. You don't need skills to come to us. Mechanical skills we will teach you. We have classes in bike mechanics. But we also need people to help with communication. We need people to help us write grants. We need a bookkeeper. We, we need a web you know, somebody to maintain our website. So like so many organizations, we just, you know, if you have skills, communication skills, mechanical skills, finance skills, legal skills, we'll put them to use in the organization. And Speak that's what keeps us afloat. Speaking of the website, can somebody watching figure out how to connect on all four of those legs of the stool by visiting the website? I hope they can. If they can't, let me know. All right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it should all be there, right? The first thing, with most good nonprofits, the first thing you see when you open up the web, website is donate here, <laughs> right? So That's we're, right. we're going to you know, check, check that box. Great. Yes. Wade, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for sharing your background and this really incredible work that you're doing. And most of all, thanks for doing that work. Really wish you the best of success with the bike connector and hope that it continues to grow to meet the significant demand that's out there. That is all for us today on The Whole Truth with me, Simon Cataldo, your state representative in the 14th Middlesex District. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope that you've been as inspired as I am by the bike connector and I hope you tune in again.